It's time to paint them post-apocalyptic space marines. Hello Bits Brood, it's Craig from bitsbox.co.uk here with a paint tutorial. So I think it's been a while since I've done one of those, but yeah, this is for the Primaris Space Marine Lieutenant that I made for my post-apocalyptic themed army. Um, I've made a couple of videos back, so um, if you haven't seen that you can just hop on a channel and have a look see how I made that and yeah this video is all about how I paint and how I paint it. So this is a technique that, um, that I use for like, all my first apocalyptic space marines so if you like how they look and you want to know how I how I've painted them then yeah this video is for you. So I have done a video in the past where I've sort of painted similar sort of technique but um, this one does take a bit further and there's extra steps showing off um, metal and leather and stuff like that. So yeah and um, before we begin if you are new to this channel and you like all things hobby related especially conversion videos, painting tutorials and stuff like that, then of course feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. We're trying to edge our way towards um, 10,000, but I'd like to do it this year, but it'll probably be next year. But even so, um, it's, it's really cool, um, we have so many awesome subscribers, and yeah, if you're not one of them, then please feel free to hit that button below. And um, speaking of awesome people, uh, just a huge shout out and a massive thank you to all of our Patreons. And you guys help support the channel further, and also we have little rewards each month for them. And if you want to know what that is all about, then you can check out the link down below. Anyway, I've rambled on way too long, so let's get straight into this. Okay, so before we even begin the priming step of the miniature, I'm going to take some Martian Iron Earth. This is to add some little bits of sort of a cracking effect. Um, if you don't know, this is like a crack effect paint. It sort of crackles as it dries. And I'll show you um, just some examples on some other miniatures in a minute. But essentially you apply it, now I'm not doing it too thickly, sometimes you might want to do it thicker, but I'm just doing random patches all over the miniature. like so. I'm not really worried at all whereabouts I'm putting it. Just random areas. Um, not, not on any sort of flesh areas. If you've got any skin areas, I don't put it on there so much. But um, any sort of armour. Just random patches of it. It's up to you how much or how little you put on. But that's probably about roughly what I'm going to do. A little bit on the chest. And these are some other miniatures that I'll soon be painting, and as you can see, it leaves this very faint, sort of cracked effect. I don't know if that's focusing or not, but if you put it on really thick, you'll get even more bigger cracks, but that'll be sort of more noticeable on the armor. So I'll just add this little bit of cracking, which will be handy um, when you later paint the miniature. So the next step is to prime the miniature and I'm going to use the army painter chaotic red which is like a dark red colored primer if you don't have that on hand then um, just primer in the usual black or white or gray whatever you use then use something like corn red maybe mix in a little bit of brown if you want or you can even just use like a brown or a dark red and um, it's entirely up to you if you are painting yours in a different color rather than yellow certain colors like um, especially like reds and that, maybe like paint it in a silver first before we do the chipping effects. Um, basically paint it in whatever colour you want to be underneath your power armour colour. So for me, my power armour is going to be yellow, but the chip, chipped away colour is going to be this dark red. I hope that makes sense, and it will make sense as the video goes on. Okay, so you can see he's now this sort of nice deep red colour. So... This is a technique that I've shown in a quite an old video now for chipping, don't like chipping on armour. So I use a heavy chipping acrylic fluid. This is from AK Interactive. Uh, really cool stuff actually. And essentially, I just apply this over the entire miniature. So it's like a clear fluid. 
So whether you can see it, you can sort of see it goes on. It looks like it goes on like sort of water, really. There's a little bit of a shine to it. That'll go once it dries, mind you. And yeah, I'm just applying it all over the armour. Now it does take a little while to dry. So probably give it a good hour or so. You'll know when it's dry though, as you can see it looks very wet as it goes on. So and yeah, it dries quite matte, so there we go. Now you don't have to do this on every single piece of the miniature. Um certainly don't if you've got any flesh or something like that, you don't need it on there. But any armour that you want chipped. I'll get the graph shoots as well. Yeah, where you want this sort of chipping effect to be, that's where you put it. So it makes sense, really. So yeah, I'll give it plenty of time to dry, and then we can start painting them um, as normal. Okay, so that's now dry. And it's actually a bit more shiny than I remember. Normally it doesn't dry that shiny. Some places it's not as shiny as others, but that's totally relevant. Um, now I'm going to paint my base colour, which I'm going with Everland Sunset. Of course, if you're painting a different chapter or whatever, you can paint whatever colour you want your armour to be. And I'm just going to go over all his power armour. As you can see, it covers a little bit, but not perfectly, so I will be doing two thin coats. And um, I have thinned the paint down, which is why it's I'm not covering perfectly, but obviously if you go too thick, it'll obscure a lot of detail, which is not the end of the world when painting in marines this way, but still. I do like to work from a nice smooth yellow. Okay, so as you can see, he's now nice and yellow. So to start this shipment effect, all you need to activate it is and just some water, so it's just a case of applying water off your brush over the miniature and then there are different ways of doing the chipping so you could just have it very random or you could have it very selective to do it random you can get like a stiff brush and just start rubbing it over the miniature. As you can see, these cracks are starting to form. I'll try not to knock any of them spikes off doing this. And it's just very randomly creating scratches and chips. Now if you want to be more selective, you could get a hobby knife or something and you can literally just scrape away certain areas. So it really depends. Oh, and that's gone way too far. Um, I do find this method on resin, um, especially, does seem to take the base layer of paint off. Um, not a massive issue, you can just go back over and paint it. But for plastics, it works brilliantly. You may find if you're using resin, maybe to use a varnish after your primer to help just protect it. But yeah, so that's a more selective way. I actually just like getting a brush and just going at it getting all random chips because they're all going to be random some will be large some not so large and you can wet this brush and just go over as well like so do some on the backpack as well And yeah, that creates our first load of battle damage. So next I'm going to add even more damage to this armour. Okay, so before I do any more weathering to the armour, I just want to paint the casing of the guns. And for that I'm going to use um, Avalon Black. Because I want to add some weathering to these areas as well, so it makes it easier to do it all 
in one hit. So just sticking on Avalon Black, thinned out just a little bit, but it covers really well. Get me an ammo casing as well. A little magazine clip sticking out there. One of his spikes has threatened to come off. They're very, very easy to knock off, I'm afraid. But I'll get some super glue on that. So, yeah, any areas that you want to be black, then certainly paint them now as I'm doing Imperial Fists. We also have a shoulder pad trim. And there's some black on the fist logo there as well. And what I'll do at this stage as well is just get some white paint and paint the circle of the logo as well. So obviously that step is very dependent on what chapter you have. Say so you have ultramarine or something and you've got an ultramarine symbol, you can paint that white at this stage as well. Okay, so now we're going to add some more weather on to this miniature and we're going to use a piece of sponge, just a bit of packaging sponge here and I'll take some dried bark which I've put on my palette and I'll add some to the sponge and then I'm just going to lightly dab, I apologise, my phone obviously you get no messages all day and then as soon as you start filming just dab on random areas like so now Still, that spike still doesn't want to stay on, so I'm just going to take him off. And yeah, it just adds a little bit more dirt. Now, you don't really have to do this step too much if your chippings are sort of a similar colour like mine are, but I still like to do just a little bit. Then, next, we're going to do exactly the same thing, but with some lead belt jam. We're also going to do this over the black areas as well and I just realised I didn't actually get round to paint on the white on the shoulder pad but I will do and then I'll just apply some of this over it after some silver and then just lightly dab on little bits of silver so this will obviously represent the paint chipping away right down to the silver underneath but definitely do it on the black you can see it gives that nice weathered effect, like so. And yeah, just gonna work around a few other areas as well. Okay, so the armor's almost the armor is almost there. But you may notice um, it needs a little bit of depth to it. So for that I'm going to add some Agrax Earthshade. And just apply that into all the recesses and just give us a bit of depth. Especially um, if you've got all these skull faces, you obviously want to try and bring that out. So yeah, I'm just applying that sort of heavy, heavily where there's detail I want to bring out. You don't have to be too consistent with this, to be honest, but you can get away with all sorts on this armour, of course. We'll spread out a little bit on the head though. And yeah, so I'm just going to work my way around the miniature. And then with that, the armour is complete. Now you could take it a step further if you want to give it a, a highlight with a lighter colour. Um, I just haven't bothered doing that on these. But you certainly could if you were to up the standard and do them a bit better than I have. Okay, so the next steps are to paint all the metal areas and all the 
leather areas such as pouches and straps. So with the metal, I'm going to take some lead belcher. And yeah, there's several metal areas on this miniature. So pretty straightforward. Just give them a coat of lead belcher. They only need the one coat really. I like how this is sort of wobbling about. I did bend this quite a bit to get it into that position, so maybe an extra dollop of super glue sort that out once I painted it. But yeah, pretty straightforward. Just just apply the lead belcher. Okay, so for all the leather areas such as pouches, etc., I'm gonna take some dryad bark. See he's got like gun holsters and stuff on his back. So it's just a case of given and then a coat of that. You only need one coat here. I've even thinned it out and it still covers quite well. Obviously, going on this colour and primer that I've used, it's not that different. But if you start with a black, then you might need a couple of coats. I'm also going to paint the gun holster as well here. So next I'm going to add some depth to both of these areas with some non oil. Now I'm just applying it straight out of the pot. So as always it gives us a lot of depth to these areas. And apply it quite thickly on the pouches. Sorry, I'm not really zoomed in, so I keep going out of shot quite easily. I'll darken down these leather areas quite nicely as well, and give us some nice depth in all the all the metal areas. So next, we're going to make this metal areas look a little bit worn. So I'm going to take some Riser Rust, or Riser Rust, however you pronounce it, and use it how it's intended really, and just dry brush it on in random areas. Just add a little bit of a rust effect to the metal. I'm not going to do it a great deal on the guns. If they're too rusty, they probably wouldn't work. Um, but a little bit in this piece of metal here that I've done on the knee plate especially. And just gradually build it up. You don't need much on your brush for dry brush and look at this. Well I'll be very careful it's ball on chain, it's really um I won't do too much on that. <laughs> Same with the spikes, but the weapon definitely so that really sort of dulls it down in some places as well. Which hopefully you can see our lights are quite bright but they give it that sort of extra shine that it doesn't really have. So the next thing to do is to take some Typhus Corrosion, give it a go of shake, and then I'm going to thin it down just a little bit with some water. You could use medium. And I'm just going to apply it in little areas as well. And definitely put some on the ball. So I did have some super to that, but obviously trying to dry brush it has um, not helped. With the type of corrosion just adds a little bit of extra texture and dirt. And if you want you could even apply some to certain areas of the armour. Maybe I'll do a few little splodges here and there. If you want your armour to be really dirty that is. Okay, so what I've been doing to add some highlights to the leather areas is I've been taking some Bane, Bane, uh, Bane Blade Brown. Bit of a tongue twister that one. I've been filling it down on my palette and I've been using my sponge again to sponge on the highlights. Now I've thinned it down a little bit more than I would and I'm using a bit less paint on the sponge and that'll just give a nice subtle, sort of worn, 
all effect on the leather areas. Hopefully you guys can see that. Okay, I'm trying to do it a bit more focused than I did with the armor. But as focused as you can be doing this method at least. It will pick up a lot of the edges quite nicely. Um, any hard to reach areas you could just dab on with your brush. As long as the paint's quite thin, then that'll leave a nice subtle little highlight. And um, if that's not the method that you, you want to use, you could um, just fill it down and apply it by brush. Don't have too much on your paint and just hit the edges. You could do odd little scratches and such with it as well, or just even just stipple it on. I wouldn't do too much stippling with this this brush, mind you. But <laughs> well, people really want to talk to me when I'm filming. Like so, now because it's thin, it's quite subtle, so you could build it up however you want, or you could even go in with a lighter, lighter brown afterwards if you so wish, which I might do. So if you want to add a further highlight, you could take some carrot stone, thin it out, and again you could just apply it to more of the sharper areas. And because it's thin it'll dry a bit lighter than this. And um, a bit darker than this, sorry, we don't want any lighter. But just make sure it's nice and thin, don't have too much on your brush. And you don't have to apply it too neatly. It gives us a little worn worn appearance. You can do it in a few random spots as well as the sharper areas. So, it's different to how I'd normally apply a highlight, I don't realise I hadn't highlighted this thing, but whereas normally you'd be trying to look for like whether light would be hitting it or just doing a simple edge highlight here, you're just trying to make it look worn by just having the lighter colour sort of showing through. So there's no right or wrong about the placement, really. Um, you could take it more realistic and think about where areas are more likely to be worn than others if you really, really want to go that route, but I don't think I care enough to do that, but so yeah, so I'll just um, go back and do this bit that I missed, and we're very close to completion. Okay, so optional step, you could take some blood for a blood god. And maybe just apply it on the weapon. I've been doing this to a lot of them just because, you know, these weapons are meant to be worn and used, so don't go overboard with it. You don't want to paint the whole thing red, but just little splashes where you think there would be some blood. Like I said, optional step. I know some people don't like bloodying up their weapons, and that's fair enough. But if you're subtle about it, it doesn't look too bad. You can have a little bit on the ball. I don't think he's going to use the ball and chain much to bloody people with, but it just looks cool. Maybe even just some little bits on the spikes. And then lastly, I just want to take some Warpstone Glow and just paint his eyes. Now, of course, um, depending on what colour you paint your marine, you may want to do a different colour for your eyes. This helmet, oh, get it in shot. So I do apologise if it, if I've gone out shot every now and then on this video. I'm not usually this zoomed in, but my desk is so messy, I sort of have to be. Um, so this helmet's not 
two great ones for eyes. I'm not really too, too happy with what's going on there. Um, if you are sort of new to painting eyes and you ever sort of make a mistake, I quite like putting in like a little black wash or something around the eye. That'll just help focus the colour a bit more towards the centre and cover up your mistakes a little bit, which is what I'll do here. Not massively into that one. And you just suck up a little bit. This helps the eye look better. I'm sorry if it's too bright to see. I don't know why the lights are sort of particularly really bright. But yeah, um, that's essentially it. Obviously paint the base up however you want. And then you've got yourself a very rough and ready post-apocalyptic marine. I know I've got a purity seal there, but just paint them out. You'd ever paint a purity seal. But obviously this video is to show you how to paint a sort of dirty armour and dirty weapons and dirty leather essentially so that's what we've done here you may have all manner of little details that you want to add to your miniature and paint up different ways but yeah I'm really happy with the result I've been painting a lot of marines like this and if you follow us on the social media and um, all the links are down below then you would have seen plenty of them I've been working on some others as well these are sort of halfway through I've been sort of painting along a little bit a little bit behind on these ones but see the armour's there so, yeah, really fun, quick and easy to paint. Don't really require much skill, if any, really, let's face it. But, yeah, if you want this type of really rough and worn-looking Space Marine or any other miniature, then certainly give it a go. The chipping fluid is brilliant. I highly recommend it. And, yeah, like I said, I did a video like using this method for in the past but this is sort of just an updated version anyway i'm going to stop waffling on now i'm sure you guys are all fed up with, with me already i hope you do like the miniature and if you think it looks cool give it a thumbs up if there's any sort of painting tutorials or techniques you'd like to see me do on this channel then certainly leave a comment below and just let me know what you think of the miniature and be kind <laughs> um but seriously um thank you so much for watching i appreciate everyone who watches these videos you're all brilliant so thanks so much and i'll see you all again in the next video. If you enjoyed this video then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.